Welcome back, let's load this shit. It's time for a sex scene, my friends. A sex scene, which means the microphone must come closer to my mouth. Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> there we go. Kiss the boy. Kiss the girl. I can't remember the lyrics to that. If he needed energy, I was willing to give it. I gently grabbed Matthew's face and tilted his head to angle with mine. Leaning in close to him, I brought my face and lips up to kiss up to his and kissed him deeply. I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. He never kissed you before, genius! I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. Matthew didn't move, nor did I feel energy drain from me. I opened my eyes and saw Matthew staring wide-eyed at me. You broke the innocent boy! But unmoving, he was unsure of what to do when I had silenced him in confusion. I pulled away and spoke. If you... Blech. I want to give you some of my energy. You used a lot of it, and I'm sure that the energy you took from me was only used for healing. Let me help you. He never touched you, bitch! Uh, I... <laughs> I, uh, mean... I really... I don't. This is getting awkward for me. <laughs> Matthew. There are two T's in that? I spelt it wrong. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> if you don't want my energy, just tell me. But I'm offering it to you if you do. All of a sudden, I felt the familiar feeling of warmth through <laughs> run through my body. Once again, I felt my body slightly heat up as Matthew wrapped an arm around my body and pulled me, pulled my body tighter to his. Matthew grew a lustful gaze before bringing, oh, okay, bringing a hand up to cup the back of my neck. Holy shit! Oh, hi guys. He looks so sad about what he is doing right now. He's like, I am so disappointed in myself. He looks like he's about to cry. <clears throat> Before I knew it. It's really hard to say this name because I know it's something named Matthew and it's just very hard to say this name now. Fuck. <laughs> Matthew pulled me into a gentle kiss, but passionate kiss. He had erupted through my body as his kiss slowly and almost tunely got deeper. Matthew kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on his chest. I'm sorry, it's so weird. The energy from my body was slowly draining in the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in the situation. Still, I held no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. Go father, go father! Matthew was full of surprises. As childish as he was, he definitely was proving to be a man while he was kissing me. Matthew wasn't forceful, but his kissing was deep and passionate, and it felt almost magical. It was it, yeah, it was how I imagined the first kiss to be like. Except with the energy drain. Soon, though, the energy drain stopped and Matthew gently pulled his face away to the end of the kiss. I stared up at him. We both panted for air. Breathe, my child, breathe! I had never kissed like that before and I was so lost in the moment that I'd forgotten how to breathe. Got a problem there. Matthew moved a strand of hair from my face to behind my ear. Eyes still full of desire. <sighs> this is so awkward. This is the most awkwardness I've ever felt right now. Matthew stood silently at me, unsure of what to say. However, I could tell that he was full, yet yearning. I could feel the hold of his mind-altering spell fade away. But I still felt hot. Hot. Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Keep going! You don't stop! I opened the opportunity and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more and I was going to let him keep going. WANTED! You hear me? WANTED! To keep going. I leaned up and kissed him again. Matthew gasped against my lips but continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tra tail of my bow. Releasing it and following his hands up from around me. Matthew, you dirty, dirty boy! He moved the ribbon to his pocket. Why'd you put it in your pocket? That's mine, bitch! Before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons my pocket. Desire my body drove me insane, and first thing I wanted to escape my lips in the kitchen with the creepy squirrel thing. What was his name? Samuel? <laughs> I think it was Samuel. Escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips down to my exposed neck. He began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses. 
I leaned my head back in the pleasure side. A pleasureful sigh escaped my lips. Matthew was ruthless in his passionate kiss on my skin. You hear me? Ruthless! Matthew didn't stop touching and kissing me, making me make, make it for months, moments and gaps yes, rushed, rushed out of my mouth to open air. It may have been full, but he was hot in that as I was. <laughs> I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. Time just flew by. I was lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond any anything at that moment. Even as he lowered his kisses down my chest, just above my brow. My heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Matthew intrigued, intrigued me. Intrigued? Intrigued? I don't know. Immensely. But something made my heart beat for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lost. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy seeing the ceiling start to spin almost wildly. I gripped Matthew's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. Fade to black. I felt good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. It felt warm and fuzzy. In the darkness, I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I got a hiccup. I got it. Okay. I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open. Just into the sight around me, I felt familiar silk underneath me, letting me know I was in my bed. Matthew, you carried her, you little boy. There are Mitches. <clears throat> I slowly sat, sat up, sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain in my neck and shoulders. I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently and healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing happened between me and Matthew. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. It was tied around S Simon. His name was Simon, Tabby. In a nice bow with a small note attached to it, I gently... <laughs> you know, wasn't it a flower or a note? No, you had to tie around that creepy fucking thing. Gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. I, I'm really, really, oh, really sorry. Oh, oh, I, I didn't mean for it to go that far. God, fuck Please God. forgive me. <laughs> Matthew, you little shithead. Where's my mouse? <laughs> there it is. Let me just adjust my butt. There we go. I stood at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. You went too far? I enjoyed it a lot. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for... He didn't thank you, bitch! <laughs> for something we both did and enjoyed, I brought the note to... to chest. Letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged myself, too, Matthew. Don't worry about it. I looked for the time of, out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. Fucking sneeze! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Whew, that felt good. <laughs> Yikes. Four hours I've been knocked out and I still feel tired. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. The remainder of that night passed by surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. That sneeze is still in my nose. Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. <laughs> they both likely had already eaten, but still I felt lonely. Fucking sneeze. Whew. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Make the sneeze go away. <laughs> Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I've had. I felt good. I feel good. Na, 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 na. I knew that I would. Na, 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 na. I feel good. I don't know the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> I drifted to sleep and woke up almost falsely the next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. I am so sorry about that gross sniffling. I literally cannot... I don't have any tissues. Well, yep. Fuck me, right? Man, how long has it been since I got that much good sleep? Did I read that right? I looked at my alarm clock. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Well, hey! 
Or as Tipo from Tales of Exilia would say, what hey? Oh gosh, I gotta play that again. Tales of Exilia 2 is what I'm on. Oh, it's gonna be great. They must be lucky today. Karma owed me some luck. After all, I had gone through in apparently a handful of days. I deserved to get some good luck. Aesthetic for a day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from the incoming text. Huh? 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 Who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! What the fuck You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stack. One moment, I need a fucking tissue. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet and I didn't have a car, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. 6.30. Woo. It's damn dogs. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. <clears throat> I packed my bag and carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate with eggs, toast, bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the plate with sugar and creamer on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? I spoke aloud. A small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. <laughs> yours. My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from the one. The one. I smiled before putting the note in my bag and heating up. The food was so delicious I devoured every amazing bite. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the door, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Before I could before bleh, bleh, before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Eh! Oh, what's wrong, baby? You okay? A Tennessee Matthew was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name is Matthew. With two T's, apparently. <laughs> my true name isn't Matthew. <laughs> I want you to know my real name. If something were to happen. <laughs> when I said the line in your name, my throat was like, was, like my throat was kind of closed, so it came out your name. It was so. I can't even imagine how that sounds in the recording. I can't even imagine. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine how that sounds. His true name. What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? Matthew gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is, is Zekeru. Zekeru! Zekeru! I like your name. <laughs> it's better than Raystro! Fucking hate James' name. James. James' name. James's. James' name. James. Hmm. As he said his name, I could feel the in my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. I can't roll my tongue very well. Matthew pulled away and smiled at me, despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise it'll come and help you. Call me, maybe. I stood up at Matthew, unable to say anything. I could, I could only nod in response. Matthew smiled before releasing my hand and heading to the dining room. Something told me that... Something told me that name would be used eventually. Foreshadowing. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Suzu, waving me down. I rushed to the door and headed to school, talking about the homework in the coming day. We made it into school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to and got our important books and necessities for first instant of the day. As I walked towards Susan and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. Oh, great! Ow! Hey, Whoa. are you okay? Yeah. Great. I love the floor. Just giving it a hug. Who did that? <clears throat> that bitch. The three of us looked back to see Lisette and her gaggle of girls. Lisette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little bitch! Suzu, don't do it, Suzu. I felt a giant fire of anger burn in my stomach as I stared at Lizette. Today was not the only time this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who had been behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lizette was the mastermind. Yeah, because it takes that much thought to trip somebody. From the looks on her face, 
my nose. <laughs> she was no friend, nor would she ever be. Had to do something. Now, since Matthew had a lot of change, like Matthew's root has a lot of changes to choices, I'm gonna save real quick. And uh, save over Sam. I don't care. And let me try attacking her. Okay, so it, it just gets bad with. I don't want to attack her because I'm a nice fucking person. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna go yes. And we're gonna go stand up and walk away. What the fuck, Matthew? Why? Fine. Okay, fine. We're gonna get her. Jeez, Matthew. Ugh. No, stop pushing that button, please. Load. God, Matthew. So I guess I was right. Get her. Get that bitch. I had enough. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> that scared me. I wasn't expecting that sound effect. I felt adrenaline rush through my- where's my mouse? Mouse! Rushed through my body as I pounced off her- off the ground and rushed at Lizette. I was not going to be the one with scrapes this time. I tackled Lizette to the ground, swiping and slapping her innocent face. She screamed and right before trying to push me off and block my attack. Holy shit! Anderson! <laughs> this is great! Stop it! Never! I wasn't listening anymore. I let my I let my carnal need to get revenge take over as I began to pull the hair to get better aim at her face with my free hand. Had enough for bullying, the wounds, the insults, all that was going to burn in the past. I scraped my nails and hands across the stuff's face over and over. My rebellion would be marked on her pretty face for all to see. Because that pushed me off and scrambled to her feet, both panic and angry at the same time. The emotion was nowhere close to anger I was feeling. Are you crazy? What the hell? You had it coming. I stood up very slowly, going daggers into Lizette's soul through her eyes. <clears throat> I must have done some. I must. I must have had some sort of monster behind me. Maybe I'd look like a monster myself. But the gaggle of girls, Lizette, and my even my friends had a look of pure terror on their face. I've had enough of you, Lizette. You obviously won't stop unless I fight back. Well, guess what? You're gonna get it! <clears throat> I charged at Lizette a second time, shoving her hand her, her hard against the lockers. She let out a yelp of pain as she smacked the back of her head against the metal behind her before glaring and shoving me back. As I stumbled back, Lizette raised her hand ready to fight. Then come on, Anderson! Show me what you've got! I bet it's not much! Girl, I, I fought a devil! Bring it! I put myself smile and anger before raising my own fist, remembering my taekwondo. I quickly snapped on, <laughs> stepped onto one leg and braced leg to get a swift kick at her head. She blocked it with her arms and stepped forward to jab me, jab at me. She had training, not surprising. I didn't care at the moment. I bent back away from the incoming jab, reestablishing my balance as I placed both through the floor. As I threw a jab upon jab at me, forcing me to block my torso. Block my torso and face my arms and hands. Hit for hit, Lizette and I exchanged and defended blows at each other. It was indeed more than just cat fights, it was a vengeful duel. My, in my mind, all I saw was Lizette. All I wanted was to make her stop, and if that meant beating her down, then it had to be done. We eventually gained a small crowd of people, all of silent observers. All silent but observing the fight. My anger intensified as my hits became harder with each second that passed between us. I couldn't let her win. I wouldn't let her win. None of the Lizette's girls dared to step in, currently afraid to after seeing our skills and individual fighting styles. She was held back by Naomi's arms, despite both of them wanting to help me. They didn't wait long for it to end, though. Jesus. Suddenly, Lizette was pulled away from me, and I was pushed against the lockers by strong force. Lizette hit the lockers as well on the opposite end of the hallway, letting out a girly grunt of pain. <laughs> I love the teacher's confused face, like, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <clears throat> I looked up to see my art teacher, Miss Gordon, holding me against the lockers with a look of surprise and serious concern on her face. Miss Anderson, what are you doing? Kick and foot, what are you doing? <laughs> I looked to see Lisa. Oh, you poor baby. Just, just cry. <laughs> yep, just let it out. Yep. Poor thing. I looked to see Lisette being held back by Mrs. Phillips, starting to cry instantly. I knew it was going to come out of her mouth, so I tried to push Miss Gordon off to comfort her, confront her, not comfort, jeez. Miss Gordon, however, kept an arm wrapped around me, keeping me back. 
No, don't you dare start crying, Lizette. You started this. Miss Anderson, get a hold of yourself! Never, I can't. I've gone Super Saiyan. What's wrong with you? What did I ever do to you? I couldn't stop the angry tears running down my face as I shouted across the hallway. Lizette and Mrs. Phillips stared in shock at my screams as Miss Gordon tightened her hold on me. I am so sick of it. Just leave me alone. Eventually, I lost my energy and began to weigh down on Miss Gordon's arm, letting my sadness take over and quench my anger. With tears and swelling pain, I could feel Miss Gordon hug me to... to her. <laughs> to keep me upright as Lizette sniffled and confided in Mrs. Phillips. I didn't do anything to her! She just attacked me all of a sudden! Yeah. Yep. Guess what, bitch? I'm recording this. Ha 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 ha! That's a lie, Lisette! You tripped her on purpose. You've always been a snobby prick to us. <laughs> Never! I gave my condolences about her grandfather's death! <sighs> I try to keep everyone calm. Is that so wrong? Oh, is that so wrong? You didn't even sound sincere! We know you were only pretending to be nice to spite us! Enough! Miss White, follow me to the dean's office. Yeah. I like how she got in trouble and I didn't. <laughs> Lizette followed, wiping her eyes in the feigned innocence as she knew how to play up. I remained still in Mrs. Is that Miss or Mrs.? Miss Gordon's arms unable to bring myself to fight to get out of Lizette again. I had done my damage. The gaggle of Lizette wannabes would make sure I became infamous around the school. I didn't care. I made a statement on Lizette's face and body. I wasn't afraid to do it again. M Miss Gordon. Burp. <laughs> However, it wasn't done with Come me. Come with me, sweetie. Sweetie. I nodded and followed. My friends frowned as they watched me leave, but they headed to a class without me. Miss Gordon led me to an empty classroom, which she had claimed as hers. It looked like all the other classrooms, but art posters lined the walls. Many students loved the room, but hated one thing. The mirror in the very back of the room. It was one thing Miss Gordon loved to use against her students. With it, she was able to see who was using their phones and who was actually studying. Miss Gordon led me to the back of the room and set me down in front of it. What do you see? Me and you, you have really big boobs. Huh? Tell me what you see. I looked in the mirror and saw myself. My clothes were a little ruffled from the fight. But beyond that, I saw me. Nothing about me seemed different than normal. I see myself. All right. What else? What else? I don't understand. Do you know what I see? I see a brilliant woman who has been working her butt off to try and find herself. She just has a little bit of adversary in her way. What does this have to do with happen with <laughs> What does this have to do with what happened with Lisette? Listen, don't think about Lisette right now. She's just another student who doesn't know what you're going through. I stared at myself in the mirror, unable to tear my eyes away. She was right, but I still lingered on what happened with Lisette. I know Miss Gordon was only trying to help, but I couldn't fight the thoughts in my head. Miss Gordon gently rubbed my shoulders, snapping from my thoughts. I looked to see her smile down at me through the mirror. You know, those were some pretty interesting moves. Taekwondo. How long were you watching? Yeah. You'll have to show me one day. Alright, get Lizette as a punching bag and I will. I laughed as she hugged me gently. Look, don't let Lizette get to you, okay? You have your own battles to face, and you can face them just fine. Instead of fighting Lisette. Focus on your goals. I had to put a bitch in her place, please! I looked up at her and nodded silently. Slightly. It was crucial to hear, but she was telling the truth. I needed to focus on myself first. She gave me a small packet of tissues and told me that she would handle Lizette. The fear about my family learning of this had quickly appeared and... Quickly appeared had vanished, but she promised to keep me out of it as much as she could. Everything will be fine now. You're a good student, so I'll let you off with a severe warning. Just don't get into any more fights, okay? Now, head to class. I nodded before heading to class. Whew. Gonna end it here, guys. I feel accomplished because I beat a bitch. <laughs>